Hello guys, in this episode I show you Lightroom 5 Beta that just came out and we're gonna do this photo together. Come and join me. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs and welcome to episode 40 of my photography Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, France. But I just came back from Orlando. Uh, I was at Photoshop World with Scott Kelby. I had an amazing week. If you've never been to Photoshop World and you have a passion for photography, you are missing out on something. The next event is in September. Please don't miss it. It's going to change your life forever. You do class all day. I did a lot of class with Corey Barker, Scott Kelby, Joel Grimm, uh, uh, guys from Disney. I mean, you name it. S really great stuff. I always go to classes of things that I don't know so much. I learn a ton of stuff and I'm passionate about photography. And being there was like, I don't know, being passionate about chocolate in a chocolate coffee shop. Beautiful. Anyways, last week episode was again on interior design. I showed you a technique how you can shoot a small room using a pano technique. That's the final result. Check out last week's episode if you've not seen it. This week, Lightroom 5 Beta came out just when I arrived in Photoshop World and I love it. It doesn't have tons of new functions, but what it has is very powerful, especially for the workflow that I have and for the type of retouch that I do. Let me show you how, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to this uh, tutorial on the new develop features of Lightroom 5. Um, first thing, a little survey. I'm doing a new way of screencasting my screen, whereby I have a low resolution screen instead of my very high resolution, and I'm recording it. You should have the menus much clearer on your screen as a result. Tell me if you prefer it this way or how I'll or how I have been doing it in the last weeks. So, you know, I know what to do. So thank you for that and let's get started. So first thing, the thing which is very new is a spot hitting brush tool here. Check it out. It doesn't do a perfect job, but here we have a man that's here and I want to take him out or at least have less attention on it. I can click on this tool before it was just a circle. Now I can still with my wheel, wheel uh, mouse make a circle, but I can paint on it. I can paint on the man and get the man to go away. Now, it's not going to do a perfect job, I'll tell you right now, but in some cases, it can help out. It's, so make sure you are on a heel and not on clone, otherwise you're going to see. Uh, I'm going to al align this better by making sure the yellow line is aligned. Okay, something like this, and I drop it. I close this, and it's not perfect, but hey, check it out. On a 100% view, you can hardly see anything. So that's one thing which is lovely. You just paint and in a lot of cases, it might work out. Okay, so let's do the standard retouching. Let's open up the shadows, bring down the highlights. If you don't know what I'm doing, please watch the past episodes. I explain these steps. I'm not gonna do it on every episode. Okay, I'm gonna set my white point by pressing the option key going right. Okay, and going left on the uh, black key, all right? Next, I'm gonna add a bit of clarity. I think clarity always does good. And let's do the white balance. You see, we have a lot of green in the lights. Uh, I had the wrong white balance, so let's just take the color picker and I'm gonna put it over this green wall and it's gonna warm up everything. So that's kind of cool. Now, the second feature I'm gonna show you I love, it's this new tool here, the radial the radial filter, it's called, how do they call it? The radial filter, exactly, shift M. So for this to work well, it's good for my, uh, the way I use it, you know I'm a big lover of dodge and burning and it's a perfect tool to do dodge and burning. Check this out. I'm gonna lower a bit the exposure of the photo, just a little bit, all right? And then I'm gonna click on this new tool. Now the way it works, it works a bit similar to, uh, to I'm going to reset it. I'm going to mix this in the middle. So for example, here, I want to, you know, you know how I like to dodge and burn. For example, I'm going to add a circle here. Right now, nothing's happening. But if I go on the right, see what happens. Everything goes brighter and what's inside the circle goes darker. That is not what we want. So for this to work properly, you have to click invert mask. And now it works. Look, check it out. It makes like a little spot of light and you can make it the size you want. 
All right, you can make it as bright as you want. I'm not going to make it that bright. And uh, look at this. It makes like a spotlight, a spotlight on the on the photo. But I'm going to keep it here. And I like the settings I've done. So I can press Alt or Option key and the Command key. Hold down in the middle and it's just going to create another one with the exact same settings. And as I like the setting that I have, I'm going to create this. So Alt Command key, I'm going to put one here, make this one bigger. I can even this one decide to make it brighter, for example. OK, and then I decide I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm just dodging burning my photo. I love that. I love it. I'm going to put one here, maybe make it much smaller. Yeah, something like that. If you want to look how it looks, you can just take your, your mouse away from the tool. You can even go here and just click before, after, before, after. Ooh, I love it. OK, Alt Command. I'm going to take another one. Oops. And I'm going to put it here. Another one, I'm going to put it here. Another one, I'm going to put it here. You know how I like to put complex stuff uh -huh. And as well, I'm going to put it here. And voila, I've recreate, recreated all the lights of this with this new tool. Amazing. Look at this. Now, if you think it's too strong, you can take individual lights and make them, uh, you know, a bit less strong. You know, I did it on purpose a bit strong so you can so you can see. But you know what? I can tell you, you can show this photo to anyone. And they are not going to see that there was some spotlights. They are just going to feel that there's something right about this photo. There's something interesting about the lights. That's the funny thing. When you do it right away, you're like, oh, shit, I did it too much. But uh, that's just because you know what you've done. But other people don't know. OK, so that's an amazing feature. Look at this. It's really perfect for dodge and burning. The original purpose of that tool, I, I believe, was the, to be able to uh, if you want to put like a vignette effect, but which is not in the center on the right, I'm not going to be using it for dodge and burning, baby, because it's really cool. It's really cool, as we say here in the United States. It's very cool, as we say in France. So, all right, so we are happy with that. Now, one more feature that I love. I love this feature, and that is, check this out, the new lens correction panel. Now, here we have new settings, upright, reanalyze, off, auto, level, vertical, and full. But all you have to know here is you just have to click on auto and it's going to make the, the photo right. Okay, I'm still going to click enable profile correction, remove chromatic aberration, I still do that, and I'm still going to do my post crop vignetting. But check this out. This is the before, and that's the after. See how the photo is more interesting? Let me see if I can. I can put it also, uh, that's a new option in Lightroom Farm. You press F and you have it full screen. So that was nice. So that was nice. And uh, it makes quite a difference. Now, I want to show you this, because uh, this feature is amazing, this feature on correcting the the the, the verticals and the, the levels in the, in the photo. Uh, it's really what they call the upright. I want to show you on this photo, which is a really, Upright. This photo is a photo I took in the La Défense. It's like a Manhattan type of area in Paris, and I was really shooting up. And you see how all the buildings are like going the wrong way. Uh, let me do a little bit of correction first, and I want to show you a new option. So I'm going to open up the shadows, bring down the highlights, open the whites, bring down the blacks. Okay, I do this very fast now. And uh, white balance, I think I'm going to go with daylight. Something like this. I'm going to add some clarity. Okay, now I want to show you a new thing. Look, on the on the spot healing brush tool, you have a new setting. It's called visualize spot. The, the sky looks clean, but look at this. If I click visualize spot, I see a circle here. I see a circle. I see dead people. No, I see a circle. And before, I could hardly see it. Now I see it a lot better. It helps to visualize a spot. I love that tool. So now I can just click and take the spot away. Okay, so, I'm sorry, oh my God. All right, so now let's go to the famous tool, this new tool, check this out. Now I wanna show you something. Uh, you can try to option, auto is not bad, but this is really, yeah, in this photo it works really well. Check this out, before, after. I mean, one click, 
one click okay you have this white things one thing which is very important when you use this tool make sure that constraints crop is not on i show you why because if it's on and then you click on auto sometime well this time it didn't do it but sometimes it's going to crop too much so what i do is i i make sure this is off i do auto and then i go into the crop tool and then i crop how i want but i have a full control of over my crop so this is beautiful. Uh, let me show you again. You have the option to, um, you don't have to take auto, but auto works in most of the cases. Oops, sorry. I clicked on reset. I wanted to click on off. Uh, this is more, uh, has a vertical travel. So it works different. You can see off, auto, off, vertical, off, level. Level is just gonna make it kind of straight, vertical. So yeah, you can just, or you can say off and full, and you just, or full doesn't give a good result there. So you just click off and auto. But auto and vertical is gonna do most of the good job. And I just wanted to show you the power of that. It's, I think it's really, really cool. So that's the main features in Lightroom 5 in terms of retouching. There are some other options. For example, in a book module, now you have the possibility to create your own pages exactly like you want and save it as a preset. That's important. You have this new option that I showed you where you press the F key and you go full screen. That's really cool. Um, and in a slideshow module now you have the possibility to add videos. But the main options I show you uh, that, uh, that was there is what I showed you. Meaning the smart preview, the clone healing tool, the rival filter, the perspective tool, and uh, voila, that's the, really the main stuff, but I'm really excited because even if it's not a lot of features, they are super powerful features, and I love the result that they give. Let me show you again this one last one, the before and after, before, after. Look how it's more interesting, and it was really easy to do. Okay, guys, now I want to make a little game with you. Anybody who is gonna share this podcast on his social networks, whether you have one friend, 10 friends, or 20 friends, if you share this podcast, send me a little email on sergeremily at gmail.com, and I will give you for free these two raw files so you can play around with some nice Paris photos with this new feature. I'll just give you the raw files. You do whatever you want with it. You can do a big print for your house just because you shared it, whether you have one friend or a million friends. It helps me to get this podcast known. So thank you very much for that. Last but not least, if you go on my website, photosearch.com slash apps, uh, I change a bit the menu. It's called now English Tutorial. You've got all my training course. Each course is about two hours long. When you click on the course, you will get an exact detail. That's the cover of the course. That's exactly all the chapters, all the videos. Usually there are five, six, seven videos and all the before and after. Each course is only $10. But if you buy them in a package, you even get a better price. For example, all the Lightroom training, which is six hours of video, is $21. All Photoshop training, which is about 10 hours of training, $35. And my entire Lightroom 4 and Photoshop training for $63. It's just still, I'm going to get the price to go a bit up probably next week or the week after. So take advantage of it now before it's too late. Après, il sera trop tard. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you're excited about Lightroom 4 as much as I am. And I say, let's get back to the studio. So I hope you liked that video. So Lightroom 5 really is something interesting. I love the radial filter. I think it's going to help me do my dodge and burning on a much precise thing. And uh, it just goes real fast. I also love how you can just clean stuff out like really fast. It's really good stuff. Let me tell you that, baby. Anyhow, um, I just want to say thank you also to a website that I love it's called photographytalks.com. These guys are amazing. They have a lot of free stuff, tips, uh, interviews of famous photographers. For example, last week they post, put up an interview with Eric Almas. Eric Almas is simply the best photographer on this planet. He is the person I want to become when I grow up. If you don't know his work, check it out. Check out photographytalks.com. Beautiful website. I want to thank you guys for all the comments and likes you've done on my last two episodes. Thank you very much. If you do like this uh, podcast, I ask you again just to take one little petite second and like the video or leave a comment. It really helps me uh, grow 
uh, this podcast and get it to a maximum photographer. And also I see what you guys want. I read every comment and it inspires me to do a new episode. I've already done 40 episodes. So, you know, I need to find inspiration, you know, every Monday. So that really helped me. So please leave me a comment on things you would like me to uh, take up in the podcast. Also, uh, if you are subscribed on iTunes, I just made a little change with Apple on iTunes. Now you can download all the 40 episodes and not just the last 10. So if you didn't see the first 10 or 15, go back on iTunes and check it out. You can get everything. You can download it to your iPad and watch everything from the start. There are some really great retouching in my first episodes. Thank you guys for being there and I'll see you next week. Yeah.